All right, guys, guess what? Been working on this one. Let's show you what I got. In the last update I did, I had uh, this guy here. This is the bolster and the pickups for the axle. Bent the crap out of it. I was really pissed off. So I had to go out and buy a new wheel set. Spent the whole 13 bucks, whatever it was for it. What happened was it wasn't making good contact with the rails and the thing kept cutting out. I'm like, ah, oh, that's no good. So I put the new trucks in there, the new uh, bolster and, and pickup and everything, and guess what? I had the same damn problem. So I messed with it for about an hour or so and figured out that the wheels themselves weren't making good contact. So I took some sandpaper and I sanded this part right here, right on the inside of the, of the wheel set and also here along the axle. And all I had to use was just some uh, sandpaper head laying around. This is, uh, I don't know, 150, 180, 200, something there on a the grit size. I'm not real sure what it was, but it worked. You don't need to use anything special. So if you look at this, sanded there, and again the axles are sanded, and again on the other side here. Once you get it all cleaned up, take some alcohol, you can clean it up a little bit further. It takes a little bit of from, uh, you know, the prototypical, you know, wheel truck because now you got all the shiny stuff on it. And usually these things are all, you know, busted up and rusty and stuff. So uh, you can take some paint. You can kind of go over a little bit to, you know, weather that and, and make it look like, you know, however you think it should look. And you know what? On that note, there's a guy out there on YouTube. His name is uh, Monster Railroader. Big Al Mayo, I need to give him a little shout out. The guy is really, really cool. He's got a lot of videos out there in weathering. He puts his layout out there. Uh, he's got some really, really cool stuff. I've really been learning a lot from the guy. So check him out if you haven't already. And I uh, just need to give him a little shout out. So anyway, going back to this guy. Once I got this going, I uh, rehooked up the, uh, the leads for the uh, decoder back onto the bolsters. Took the speaker and put it into this uh, film canister I showed you guys last time I was working on this. All I did was I took it and I cut the end off, sanded it off, just shoved the speaker in there literally, threw a piece of tape on there, sounds great, changes the sound, the whole dynamic of it entirely. So let's put it on there and uh, Of course, it sounds like you know the SD38 or 40, whatever it is that comes up, you know, with it only, but doesn't cut out anymore. I don't know how many curves you have to really test it with, but uh, you know, it works pretty good. We'll throw the uh, throw the bell on there. It'd be really cool if you could take one of these film constators and stick it in one of these engines, but it just doesn't fit so well. At least not one this big. So. There you have it. I'm going to throw the shell back on. I'm going to finish taping some of the stuff up there so it uh, doesn't move around so much in there. And we're going to start throwing some sound in there on part three of this video. So, there you have it. That's where I'm at with this guy. We're almost done with it. I think it's going to sound tight when it's done. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.